on a shot right off and that is in at the back of the net. What a beautiful start for the home side. What a goal. You will not see a better goal than that. It's semi-final time in the Westfield W League. One win away for Sydney FC or the Newcastle Jets. They meet at picturesque Leichhardt Oval in Sydney this afternoon. Newcastle back for the first time since season one. Sydney FC play finals every year in the W League. What an exciting time for those young mini Roos out on the pitch holding a big Sydney FC banner getting ready for both teams to make their way out of the tunnel and they are walking around on a perfect pitch here at Leichhardt Oval. Certainly little for the players to complain about. Big crowd rolling in as well. Sydney FC broke their standalone record for a game last week against Western Sydney Wanderers and I'm sure plenty of those happy fans would have been making their way into Leichhardt Oval today hoping to cheer their team on to a potential home ground final. Of course they would need the other semi-final to go their way. Matters at hand for Newcastle as well. Plenty of travelling fans making their way down. It's been a very long wait all the way back to season one when they last played in finals. And they bowed out 1-0 that afternoon to Canberra United. How they would love to take that extra step and go through to a W League decider. There's one of the Matilda stars in the game, Emily Van Egmont, leading the Newcastle team. And Teresa Polias, her 100th game in a Sydney FC shirt this afternoon. 115 total around the Westfield W League, which makes her the second most appearances in the competition's 10-year history. Nervous moments here as these two teams make their way out onto the ground. High-pressure situations, these games. Six out of 18 semi-finals have gone all the way to penalties. That is actually a pretty high ratio, so both teams will have to set themselves for potentially 120 minutes of football this afternoon. What a prospect that is. Great to see a guard formed by numerous Mini Roos teams from the region, welcoming players out onto the pitch here. As we see the referees lined up as well, ready to get this one underway. Let's see how they line up this afternoon. Sydney FC make just the one change to the starting 11. Princess Abini comes in at the expense of Remy Seamson, who moves to the bench. It's five on the bench in W League finals, meaning opportunities for Rachel Souter and Julia Vines, who are both recalled to the Sydney squad. Newcastle Jets rested a number of players last week, one of whom was Natasha Pryor. She slots right back in at the centre of defence at the expense of Sophie Nanadovic, who moves to the bench, while Courtney Vine and Nicola Orgill with the other two players rested for the 3-0 defeat against Melbourne City. It is going to be warm this afternoon here in Sydney and not any cloud cover to speak of either. So while it may only say 25 degrees, Players are going to have to brace themselves in the bright sunlight for what could be quite a taxing afternoon. There is Ante Juric after starting zip and three. He certainly had the pressure on, unbeaten since then, perhaps relaxing him. And one thing he's proud of is being able to work a number of teenage members of the Sydney squad into his side throughout the year, many of them featuring on the bench this afternoon. His opposite number, Craig Deans, wasn't too worried about the scoreline against Melbourne City last week. Certainly wasn't happy at the way his team conceded goals, though. Two of them coming from headers at set pieces. And being a former centre-back himself, that's something that they had to work on and sharpen up during the week. Today's referee is Lara Lee, assistants Sarah Ho and Laura Moyer, while the fourth official is Kelly Jones. And with Kate Jakovic currently in Doha preparing for the 2019 Women's World Cup, we're going to have some new faces holding the whistle in W League finals this season. There is Teresa Polias, 100th appearance in a Sydney shirt, one of the best players of the W League era. Ten Matildas caps as well to her name. Just a fantastic servant of the game and setting herself for the big occasion today. And on the other side of the equation, Emily Van Egmond, that centre of midfield, is going to be so important to deciding the contest this afternoon. And as you can see there, 68 Matildas caps. It's uh, not quite a formality, but you'd think that she's going to end up in the 100 club the way her career is going. 
That whistle gets us underway then. A spot in the grand final beckons for one of the Newcastle Jets or Sydney FC. And it's Sydney in early possession as they break through the left side with Chloe Legazzo. And as we see the referee adjudicating offside, I welcome former Matilda Sarah Walsh to the broadcast. Uh, must, as a former Sydney FC player yourself, bring back a lot of happy memories and some painful memories too, semi-final weekend. Yeah, especially this is a mouth-watering contest here, Teo. So excited to, to see these two teams playing, definitely coming into today's match with different results and different momentum. So a bit interesting to see how Newcastle bounce back from uh, their loss last week. Uh, but uh, this... This pitch in particular does not bring back great memories for me. A lot of running as a striker for Sydney FC. It always felt bigger, this pitch. The dimensions were larger. And I think that will actually prove to be an advantage for Sydney FC today. They would really like to stretch this Newcastle defence to really break them down and, and force them out of a really solid block. One other thing they'll have going for them is a pretty distinct home ground advantage as far as the crowd is concerned today because the stand continues to fill. Fans making their way in around the ground, looking forward to this semi-final. Stengel trying to buy the first corner of the afternoon. Just hugged the touchline. Aubrey Bledsoe gets her first touch. Those two went to the same college in the United States. Wake Forest, Katie Stengel and Aubrey Bledsoe. So I'm sure they'll enjoy going head-to-head -head this afternoon. Plenty of American connections out there on the pitch, as is the case in almost any W League game. One change I would like to, to mention and talk about is uh, the Sydney, Sydney FC's change of Remy Seamson, who played outstanding last week against Western Sydney Wanderers. Uh, but it's obvious that uh, Ante uh, Urich is, is wanting Caitlin Ford to play in the middle of uh, in that nine position, which has obviously made the, the decision around bringing a Princess Abini on for Remy Seamson, who she can play out wide, but it's not one of her preferred positions. Uh, but I, I guess it, it, it talks to how we analyse and break down what they want from Caitlin Ford today on Tash Pryor. And you can already see Tash Pryor staying really close to us. So it's a match-up to watch today. Straight into the action, Caitlin Ford, as is Princess Abini here. But Van Egmond first to the ball. Now Cassidy Davis, game number 60 for her in the W League today. Actually works full-time at the Newcastle Jets. So there's someone who quite literally lives and breathes the club. And now Sydney are away. Deflected cross and turned behind for a corner kick. Bit of an element of surprise there as Caitlin Cooper went raiding down the left side. And perhaps that's the sort of thing which can certainly catch a defence by surprise. Well, that would be the danger for Newcastle Jets today, uh, allowing Sydney FC in behind. You can see they did start deep enough, but obviously not enough to keep Caitlin Cooper out. So an early corner. First contact was Van Egmond in the end. Sonnet was trying to fashion a header. Second time ball from Legazzo. Crowd went up behind it, but Britt Eckerstrom, a safe pair of hands. Stengel, straight back to Polias. Now Yeoman Dale can consolidate. Whistle's gone. We've got. A slight injury here for Teresa Polias. Maybe a knock to the midriff of some sort. I suspect that means the referee will have to restart play. It was a very late call from the referee. Thought it might be a drop ball, but it turns out it's going to be a Sydney foul after all. Gemma Simon guarding Princess Abini. So back to Yeomandale they go, and Gilliland wins the ball. Wheeler. Simon continued the run. And now the cross. Not asking enough questions of the Sydney defence on that occasion. Devanna, loose touch. Hannah Brewer trying to capitalise Brewer. And the sneak attack from Hannah Brewer draws a very good save out of Bledsoe. We're going to see plenty of this today. Hannah Brewer starting up really high on uh, Lisa Devana. She's put a pride the pressure here, and she's won that ball. She knew that Lisa Devana would be closing that down. So the quick early cross in was excellent, and it really tested the keeper. So an early corner each for both teams. Sydney have been really questionable on aerial balls. They've conceded a lot of headed goals this season. Van Egmond trying to cause some trouble, and Aubrey Bledsoe is equal to that one. 
We're well, not wrong, Teo. The two white shirts at the back there. And it is something that uh, we've heard a lot about. Uh, their, their defensive corners, especially defensive free kicks, have been poor all year. And it's something that they really need to clean up. And you can see being tested on that first corner. Not a good start. Sydney able to win the ball back here. A little bit of pressure on Bledsoe. And Newcastle able to win the ball back. Kingsley, now Van Egmond. Shooting range for Van Egmond and fires it just over the bar. Well, that was shades of her double against Canberra United two weeks ago. Shots from that sort of territory couldn't quite find the radar here. Well, Emily Van Egmond, she's produced some serious power off one step here. Just missing the top bar. It's a really, really promising start for Newcastle Jets. Sydney FC on notice. Van Egmond already trying to stamp herself on the game. Simon committed to the physical. Too much, according to the referee. And Aaron Gilliland gets a talking to for kicking the ball away. Last thing you would want is a yellow card for that just six minutes into a semi-final. A bit of leniency shown by Lara Lee. Maybe common sense, you could say. Wouldn't want to go doing it again, though. Free kick comes to nothing. Van Egmont. Kingsley motoring from a long way back. Concedes the chase. You can already see the intent from Newcastle Jets. They're pushed high, high outside of their own half. They do not want to get camped in their own half. By a team like Sydney FC, who like to keep the ball and really break lines down. Kingsley again. Can't find Stengel. Cooper and Rolston combine. Now Devanna. Houston made it a contest. Shouts to the assistant referee, not heated. Houston keeping composed, and now Kingsley away from Gilliland. Yeoman Dale is out the back. Ebini almost able to out hustle Simon. And the result is a Newcastle throw. Tash Pry, you can see how heavily the right thigh is bandaged up there, but no mobility problems getting to that ball. Ford. Legazzo. Carly Ledbrook. Cass Davis awake to the danger. Ledbrook is Sydney's equal top scorer this season with five. Davis not taking any risks. Stengel under pressure. And it's fallen. The most dangerous player in Devanna. Pass to Ford. Still Ford. Had them in a spin, Caitlin Ford. Newcastle had no answer. And Sydney FC strike first. Superb control of the ball. And a lashing in the finish to make it Sydney FC 1, Newcastle 0. Well, this was absolutely dazzling from Caitlin Ford. It was masterful. The touches on the ball, the pressure that she had to break through. You could see the ball was early. It was important that it come early. She already had Tash Pryor beaten. She was already backpedalling. But here, the dazzling display of footwork. And then the finish. Well, this is remarkable work from Caitlin Ford to break this open. 1-0 for Sydney FC. Stunning individual brilliance here from Caitlin Ford. Sydney FC into the ascendancy, and what a goal to do it with. Caitlin Ford with the full array of skill. Newcastle want the instant reply. Yeoman Dale able to make amends for the loose first touch. Now Pryor jumped that pass. Yeoman Dale still full of effort. Just led the Newcastle defence. A merry dance there, Caitlin Ford. And the quality of the finish. Left Eckerstrom stranded. Newcastle now have to chase the game early. Brewer can't connect with Kingsley. 
Well, I have no doubt that Craig Deans would have spent so much time on, on video this week talking about uh, how important it was for his defence to not get caught out, uh, being too deep, allowing Sydney FC to play in front or not being deep enough and allowing that space in behind so people, uh, players like Caitlin Ford can do that. Uh, and it's just such a fine line between getting it right and wrong. You allow Caitlin Ford too much time uh, in front of you. They don't have the pace to be able to sort out any issues in behind. So uh, you can imagine how much that keeps them in two minds throughout this match. We are watching the two highest scoring teams of the home and away season. So that does certainly indicate that Newcastle will have no trouble in trying to find a way back into the game. Stengel. Sydney with the numbers. Teresa Polias. What about the Sydney mentality from here, Sarah? Early goal, chance to set the tone. Do you think they keep the intensity higher or is there a period of consolidation now that they're in the lead? Well, I really think that goal was important to them because they were on actually on the back foot. Newcastle Jets had started out a little bit better in the first 11 minutes. They'd held the ball better, had, a, I guess, higher position, possession higher up the park. And I think they've been caught out a little bit, Newcastle Jets, and some would say unfair because they actually had more of the possession higher up the park. But Sydney FC, this will help settle them now. Now they, now they can actually settle in and play their own game. Brewer. All about the pass at this point. And Gilliland was in an offside position. You're right about the territory. They've had no problem taking it to within a metre or two of the penalty area, but it's that pass into the box at the moment which just hasn't connected for them. Only early days. And to be honest, I haven't actually seen it in a long time. Um, and I think the, the last time I uh, got to see it was... Given away, and now Gilliland. Sonnet with the slight challenge. And did enough to take the ball while leaving Gilliland on the deck. Legazzo with the early ball. Ford. You can see the confidence in Caitlin Ford. Now Legazzo. Teasing ball, but only a late run from Ledbrook. Always the keepers. Well, I have to say, this was a, a master stroke from Un, uh, Ante Juric. No, we're only 10 minutes into the game, but really there's a mismatch for Caitlin Ford on Tash Pryor in the middle of the field, higher up. Every time that one-on-one, -on -one, it's a complete mismatch for Newcastle Jets. Stengel. Now Gilliland. Not much to aim for in the area. Gilliland is going to hold it up. Wait for support to arrive in the form of Gemma Simon. Claire Wheeler. Sydney now with numbers back in behind the ball. Van Egmont. Brewer. Trying to speed the attack back up, but Lisa Devanna is back on defensive duty. Snapping at the heels, Brewer just couldn't take the ball. Cooper to Rolston. Sydney can't play their way out of trouble. Houston. And the foul given after the tangle of legs. Well, that was some really good press there from Newcastle Jets, making it really difficult for Sydney FC to play out. You can see Tori Houston had pushed up high and anticipated that ball to let a Kylie Ledbrook. We spoke about Sydney's vulnerability in the air earlier. Corners, one instance. Set piece like this, potentially another. Katie Stengel and Natasha Pryor, the two tallest targets to aim for. Underneath the free kick of Emily Van Egmont. And instead, tried to catch the keeper out, and Bledsoe had to backtrack to tip that over for a corner. Well, it wasn't the intention of Emily Van Egmont to shoot for this. But it's dipped down perfectly for her. Just a really good opportunity now here for Newcastle Jets. I'll push Natasha Pryor forward. And Stangle's good in the air as well. They really crowded the keeper on Newcastle's first corner of the day. Element of looking into the sun as well for Sydney. They're going to mix it up and go for the short corner. Van Egmond. 
And the deflected cross falls kindly for Cooper. Gemma Simon able to short circuit the potential counter attack. And you can see the protestations of Gemma Simon there saying that she got the ball, motioning for the shape of it. Yeah, it was a strong challenge here. I think she's followed through though with a dangerous studs in the air. Ledbrook, neat touch on to Ford. Ibini, Legazzo. Fighting her time, Chloe Legazzo, directing traffic, told Yeomendale to make the run. Yeomendale obliged. And Wheeler in a bit of a bind with Ibini. That's good defensive work from the front by Princess Abini there. Sydney get the ball back. Legazzo. And the referee eagle-eyed on this occasion, paying a handball. Right on the edge of the penalty area. Let's well, hit the hand of Gemma Simon here outside the box. Is that a tough call? It was Sarah? a very, it's, it's a tough call. An impassioned plea from Legazzo the moment it happened and the referee agreed. But the movement building up to that play was, was pretty good from Sydney FC. Look out for the rotation between Kylie Ledbrook and Caitlin Ford. Now Sydney's turn to ask questions over a set piece. Britt Eckerstrom, the Newcastle keeper, waiting on the goal line. And can't beat the one-woman wall. Jenna Kingsley able to block Ledbrook's free kick. Second time ball from Ledbrook. And looking into the sun, well read by Eckerstrom. Goalkeeper from the Portland Thorns like so many before her, coming to Australia to get some competitive experience in game time, hope, hoping to take it back to the NWSL where so many second goalkeepers have been able to enhance their reputation by playing in Australia. Eckerstrom, no different really, he's had a very good season. Yeoman Dale, that one slices out for a goal kick. The beauty of having Emily Sonnet in your back line, US centre back. Uh, look, they can really start their attack from there. So many times we've seen she just her decision making on the ball, her ability to be able to, you know, cut through defence and lines and break open play, put the opposition on the back foot and overload with numbers in the midfield. It's a huge asset for Sydney FC to be able to start their attack from the back line. Newcastle pressing. Polias went to ground. Play continues with Katie Stengel. Now Jenna Kingsley. Rolston able to get in the road. And Devanna shut down by Brewer. Committed from Hannah Brewer, but gives the ball away. And now Sydney can turn with numbers. Legazzo. And slightly ambitious with the pass overhitting it beyond the run of Princess Avini. There's so many tactics uh, at play out here. Just watching Hannah Brewer and Lisa Devana on the other side, playing a bit of cat and mouse, obviously def defending on each other. Really working out how far each player is actually going to push up the field before they leave that sp space in behind open. Ralston against Stengel. Now Gilliland. Devanna. Again, the early ball, hoping for Caitlin Ford. This one's going to lure Eckerstrom out of the box. And that is cool as you like. Off the midriff of the Newcastle keeper. Now the Jets find themselves needing to play their way through Sydney's press. 
Huster coughs it up. And the late contact there from Teresa Polias. And as you can see there, what for, what for. The yellow card comes out of the pocket first caution of the afternoon. And I suspect it may well have been for the response rather than the foul itself. Yeah, because we didn't actually see anything worthy of a, a yellow card in this challenge here. Ah, uh, there it is there. Teresa Polias. Uh, she doesn't want that weighing on her mind for the... The next 70 minutes of this match, she's on a yellow card. I doubt it'll temper her combative nature. The question is, can she time, just like that, every challenge for the remainder of the game? Ledbrook, hoping for Ford. <laughs> there are some Teresa Polias fans in the crowd with their signs for today. Game number 100 in Sydney Colours. Kingsley. You can just see from Gilliland dropping the shoulders there, frustrated at the delivery, not even being able to compete for. Wheeler and Pryor combining to sandwich Caitlin Ford and win the ball away. Physical defending. Now Huster. And it was... Measured almost perfectly for Yeoman Dale's slide rather than to the advantage of the Newcastle winger. Holding down that right back corner at the moment, Georgia Yeoman Dale has got Gilliland and Gemma Simon to deal with. That was actually some better movement there from Newcastle Jets. No nonsense clearance from Yeoman Dale. Gazzo trying to pick Houston's pocket. What I'm actually not seeing from Newcastle Jets at the moment, when they're getting higher up the pitch, uh, aggressive runs forward. Some of the runs are a little bit timid. You know, the player on the ball is not, not actually sure whether or not they should play it, so they're not playing it. They're making the wrong decision. They're not playing the first thing they see, and then the pitch changes. Devanna. Livening up Devanna. Curving it back only as far as Cassidy Davis, but the giveaway means Sydney take over in their attacking half. Yeomandale didn't like the options down the right side. Rolston coughs it up through the middle, but well, it's giveaway after giveaway. Sydney take over once again. Sydney able to hold the ball on this occasion. Stringing passes together. Ivini. Yeoman Dale, show of strength against Simon. The cutback, all Newcastle. Ford, Legazzo, straight into Houston. And given some of the strikes Chloe Legazzo has produced in recent weeks, the crowd had every right to hope for the top corner once again. That one was hooked straight into the Newcastle midfielder. And now Ralston in a one on one against Stengel. And there's one thing Liz Ralston doesn't do, it's lose one-on-ones. Newcastle get the throw. Van Egmond, another testing ball on the goal line. Well, it's a little bit hopeful for me. There's only one player in the box, one white, white-shirted player. Newcastle Jets are not getting enough numbers forward. Ford, you can see the trouble she's causing this Newcastle defence at the moment. Everyone on alert every time she goes near the ball. Now look, Garzo, Ibini, and the shot, no real power behind it. There is the national team manager, Alan Stajic, sitting in the back row there, enjoying the action. Attends as many games as he can. You see him in every city through the course of the season. Flag will go up here against Kingsley for just half a second. Might have been thinking that she was through. Not the case. Well, that was offside, but 
It was a good play there from Newcastle Jets. It's probably the first time I've seen a striker force the hand of the midfielder. They made that run. There was no other option but to play it. Back to the point you made, though. You're right that the apprehension means that Newcastle have slowed down so many situations where they break into their attacking third. And then the momentum just by their own foot goes away. Now starting to mix it up. The problem for them in the short term is that Sydney FC have the ball. Carly Ledbrook is on the move. Ford. Newcastle happy to back off and let Sydney hold the ball at the moment. Ledbrook. Now Legazzo. Yeoman Dale. And caught by Wheeler. Play continues. Ledbrook. Out to Devanna. To really assert herself on the match, Lisa Devanna. Tried for the one two, but Houston was able to read it. Now the Jets can try and break. See from Houston throwing the arms out, didn't like the options. Gilliland has to strive just to run down a lateral pass. Now Kingsley. Stengel. And it's all Sydney FC. Legazzo. Keep the ball. Hear the shout of keep the ball from Craig Deans coming from the sideline. And Ford just donating that one back to the goalkeeper. Well, that's the, the end result is Stengel losing the ball and playing it to nobody because she doesn't have support. She's held the ball up. She's done her job. But at that point in time, Houston didn't work hard enough to be able to get out behind the shadows of her uh, defender, which was Ter Teresa Pliers. There's no movement off the ball. It's not just as simple as keep the ball. There's no movement. There's no options, which leads to poor decision-making. Rolston just ran herself into trouble, really. Van Egmont. Now Kingsley. Van Egmont connecting with Stengel. Only Gilliland in the middle. Stengel takes on Rolston. And Rolston able to take it off Stengel's feet. Behind for a Newcastle corner. Perhaps another set piece chance to take a different look at this Sydney FC defence, which has held resolute through 28 minutes. Greg Deans on the sideline. He is uh, he's not happy with Newcastle Jets at the moment. And it is around the movement. He was just asking Jenna Kingsley to make a run forward, a, a run she should have made without being asked. He really applies pressure on your strikers to do something special with it without the support. Gemma Simon getting ready to take the corner. It's only been cameo appearances for her, either coming off the bench or being subbed out of games so far this W League season. Corner delivery promising here, but Sonnet read it best. Follow-up from Gemma Simon. This time it's Caitlin Ford. Brewer. Gilliland. Straight into the challenge of Caitlin Cooper. Gilliland goes and wins it back. Elias diving in front of the shot. Gilliland was just going to have a pop from distance. And Newcastle will go all the way back to their goalkeeper to reset. Allowing the Sydney defence to push out. Brewer. In the end, Sydney FC wouldn't feel too threatened by either the corner or what came after it. Well, I think Newcastle Jets at the moment are their own worst enemy. They're playing so good in the first seven minutes and now they're one out defending. You'll notice when the press, it's, it's not everybody going. They're just in two minds at the moment and I think uh, the goals really rattled them. Legazzo on the overlap, Ford wants to go solo. 
ran straight into Pryor. Yavindale. Lugazzo through Jeva Simon, finds a beanie. It's going to sit up for Ledbrock. Good save. Straight out Ackerstrom, but it was certainly stinging the fingers. Carly Ledbrook very nearly made it too. Oh, well, this is a sensational reaction from Ekestrom. This is fired at her, the ball through from Chloe Lagazzo, cheeky as you like. And it's set up, unfortunately, for Newcastle Jets. The reaction time on point. Well, it's not a spectacular save, but the goalkeeper's positioning and reaction, as you say, Sarah, is what makes it an excellent stop. I don't know about you, Tao, but uh, there's no hands, Mike. No chance my hands are going up that quick to save that. Sonnet. Sydney buoyed by the promising attack just a moment ago. Ball spills, though. Huster. Stengel, a long way from the goal. She's attacking. Slips it out to Kingsley. Devanna eager to backtrack. Lugazzo, Ipini. Sydney just seem to be using the space and expanses of Leichhardt Oval to their advantage at the moment. Given away though by Sonnet, Gilliland Stengel flags up, offside. And not for the first time this afternoon, a seemingly promising Newcastle attack is ended by the assistance flag. When Newcastle Jets here again, turning attack, oh, sorry, turning defence into attack. And off the back again, off a, a mistake from Sydney FC. All of their chances starting from an offside position. I think uh, Sydney FC very guilty of this. Their rest defence, they're not in any position to be able to counter an attack from Newcastle Jets. If that mistake's made. Tight but correct call. Liz Ralston stepping up just at the last second. Now Sydney through Ford, away from Davis, and there's no one in sky blue at the far post. Anna Brewer able to deal with the danger. Technique holding up there as she steered it away from her own net. Sydney not done. Legazzo, Ford, Polias from way out. Polias couldn't dip it in time. Well, this this defence from Newcastle Jets. They're resolute at the moment. There is no more you could ask from from Cassidy Davis. <laughs> Defending on Caitlin Ford here. There is nothing more. She's pushed her out wide. But good players find their own space. They find a way to get that ball in the middle. And then the sailing shot from Teresa Polias. <laughs> but uh, in Newcastle Jets defence, they are they're a good team when they keep keep other teams in front. I think there's just been a couple times Tash Pryor's been caught out. Not picking up Caitlin Ford. Well, there's been confusion between herself and Cassidy Davis. Who is picking Caitlin Ford up? Can you pick Caitlin Ford up? Well, on the current form, it's proving very difficult. They don't have a choice, Newcastle. They just have to keep trying and keep chasing. Here is Ford. Polias, almost hiding behind the referee there. Devanna. And asking a bit too much of Polias, who wins it back by blocking Wheeler's pass. Cooper. Newcastle trying to organise behind the ball. Legazzo. Still Legazzo. Newcastle inviting her on. Didn't want to fire a shot. Ibini. And now Ledbrook. Oh, what a strike from Carly Ledbrook. To perfection. Sydney double their lead. The fans love it at Leichhardt Oval. Carly Ledbrook makes it Sydney FC 2. Newcastle Jets nil. Well, well, well. Carly Ledbrook. This is absolutely irresistible.
great football here from Sydney FC. They had patience, they showed everything, the class and the skill. And then the ball in. And then the sliding shot here from Kylie Ledbrook. Oh, this is absolutely exquisite. The timing and the power and the accuracy in that shot. There are not too many players playing the Westfield W League today that can actually pull that off. Kylie Ledbrook now stands alone as Sydney FC's top scorer this season. That is goal number six of the campaign. 31 years old, coming back from years out of the game, retired, having children, and actually said to Fox Sports during the season that she credits the new PFA deal as one of the reasons that she decided to come back. The guaranteed income of playing in the W League was able to entice her back onto the pitch after a winter playing at MacArthur Rams in the NPL. What a story, and now back involved here again. Legazzo. Sydney feeling it at the moment. A third would be an enormous mountain to climb for Newcastle. Ibini. No cutback options. Ledbrook now arrives, but the pass is misdirected. Gilliland. Van Egmond. And now a bit of space to work with for the Jets, but they need to move at pace. Wheeler trying to accelerate. Now Kingsley. Stengel trying to make something happen, Katie Stengel. And it's high and wide in the end, but Newcastle at least able to fire a shot. Well, that's the danger that Stengel threats. It was an absolutely gorgeous turn to hit this. The left peg. Some serious venom too. And that's the danger that she uh, poses, for Sydney FC. But, but in that attack, I'd just like to point out it was a great opportunity for a counter. And the only team that was working hard to get up the other end of the park was Sydney FC. They did not see one white shirt. Making sure they did everything to get into that box. Ford. And now Yeoman Dale sprinting forward. Sydney just working so much harder at the moment. Newcastle able to transition numbers back. And the foul on Yeoman Dale from Natasha Pryor. And the referee, after thinking about it, Lara Lee does reach for the pocket. And it is the second yellow card of the afternoon. First for the Jets to Natasha Pryor. Well, I don't mind that one here. You can see Yeoman Dale was off here, but I'll tell you what, hearts in mouth for Newcastle Jets fans out there. That was awfully close to being inside the box. This is red alert for the Jets. If they were to fall 3-0 down, it would be shades of last week when Melbourne City flew out to a similar scoreline and were able to hold them at arm's length in the second half. There's no tomorrow, though, for the Jets. They have to stand tall here under this set piece. Ledbrook and Devanna combine. Crucial header from Brewer to keep it away from Ford initially. Legazzo. Polias. Shooting range for Teresa Polias. And it missed by a whisker. Well, when luck's on your side, shots like that don't seem so ambitious, do they? Didn't really have the power that it needed to be able to test the keeper. But that's some seriously late dip. But uh, this is a really important period, time in the match for Newcastle Jets. I've seen it time and time again over the last couple of weeks for Newcastle Jets. When things get bad, they get worse. It just requires one of their older players to get their foot on the ball. Defending here once again, Ford. Davis with solid contact. And Ford has stayed down. Gaiman Dale has a live ball at her feet, but the referee is going to blow the whistle. You see Caitlin Ford there. Saw after the bump from Cassidy Davis. Players are going to take an impromptu drinks break while Ford receives treatment. She did quite well up against two players here. 
Is there a possible elbow? Late elbow. <laughs> Unintentional. To the head. And Cassidy Davis. Discussions going on with the trainers at the moment. Have another close look, Sarah. We'll have a look at the knee. Let's see if... Left knee that she's trying to launch from there. Maybe hard to speculate. The good news is she's able to walk under her own steam. Albeit rather proppy. Yeah, she's possibly twisted the knee. She's been such a live wire in this game, Caitlin Ford. Hunter Juric certainly won't want to lose it. Well, it was kind of innocuous, wasn't it? You see, maybe if it's hyperextended, and uh, there you can see there, it's just she landed in an awkward position. A little bit of force. Sydney temporarily go down to 10, and as a result, they've actually switched Princess Sabini over to the left flank and Lisa Devanna to the right. I'll tell you what, it does not look good on the sideline here. She's wincing. She's going for a, a hop on the left, left leg and just can't do it. I know it's not even half time, but does Ante Juric is thinking also turn to a potential grand final berth and not wanting to run Caitlin Ford into even further trouble today? Well, it's a real worry. See, they've asked her to do a, a single leg hop on the left knee and she winced. So I think given that we are close to the, the half time, you probably wouldn't risk bringing her on unless she can do something like that. Well, the other question is, does Sydney just go down to 10 for the remainder of the first half? I know it's three minutes plus stoppage time and it could be the sort of thing that invites Newcastle on, but that would give them a bit more time to assess. And really, Sarah, surely this is an opportunity for Newcastle, without Sydney's most dangerous player on the pitch and being up a player, to really try and make a go of trying to peg one of these two goals back. Yeah, absolutely. Crucial times here. Newcastle will have happy memories of their trip to Amy Park when Melbourne Victory tried to do something similar with Jun Gaiul. They rolled the dice with 10 and Newcastle scored during that time. Caitlin Ford, you can see there, still being assessed by the medical staff of Sydney FC. Newcastle in possession, trying to capitalise. Stengel. Wheeler. And the pass just beyond the reach of Jemison. Hush has fallen over the crowd here as well at Leichhardt Oval. All the attention is on the woman walking the touchline in front of them rather than what's going on out on the pitch. Well, she hasn't even gone for a, a jog yet, so uh, I'm not sure if they'll assess her underground or she's coming back on now. Looks like that. To keep an eye on her. This is a big call and a big moment in the game as fourth official Kelly Jones waves Caitlin Ford back into the action. Next time the ball's in her vicinity, we'll be keeping a very close eye on how hard she's able to go. Of course, it's all in the context of a huge 2018 for the Matildas as well. Algarve Cup, Asian Cup. Caitlin Ford's going to be a key part of that. Here's Houston now for the Jets. And hooking the shot. That was better work there from Newcastle Jets to find Tori Houston. She hasn't been able to get that space in between the lines. It's something they've done so well. And they hung their hat on it throughout the season. Been so crafty in the midfield. Yeah, we are. We're going to see Remy Simpson walk, warm up. Ante Juric having a word to his striker, Remy Simpson. Four goals this campaign, including one of them last week against the Western Sydney Wanderers. I wonder if that's get ready for the second half rather than get ready for right now. At the moment, Newcastle are just trying to swing the pendulum back in their favour. Starting to get a bit more promising possession up the field. Gilliland. Now Van Egmont. Stengel. And the pass not close enough to Huster. Who's straight back into the action though, Tori Huster. And now Gilliland with space to swing in a ball. 
Only finds Zabini. Here is Ford's first contest back in the match. And, well, she's almost on one leg here. Still, it's going to break kindly for Devanna. Challenge coming in from Brewer, wiping out Devanna. We're going to see what the decision is here from the referee. Bit of consultation with the assistant. Big call here for Lara Lee. Devanna's down as a result of the tackle. It was desperation stakes from Hannah Brewer. Uh, look, this doesn't look good. It, she's fallen awkwardly. The ankle buckling. Referee still yet to make a decision on and what's going to be the call here for Newcastle Jets. Well, she's got one of the best assistant referees in the women's game, Sarah Ho, over on this near touchline. They're conferring. We've ticked into three minutes of stoppage time at the end of the first half. Van Egmond throws in her two cents. What's the call going to be from Lara Lee? Here it's red. It's a red card for Hannah Brewer. Newcastle go down to 10. Already in a 2-0 hole. And now Hannah Brewer has been sent off. Well, this just completely changes the game, doesn't it? You see Lisa Devana was off. Oh, she's... I don't know about this call. She's got the ball. She's clipped Lisa Devana as the last player as well. Yeah, and Lisa Devana. Clear passage of play on goal with the ball. Oh, this is horrible news for Newcastle Jets. And Lisa Devana's come straight off the pitch. She's had horrific injuries with her ankles. And she's hobbling. It's been an incident-packed first half of this semi-final. Great goals, a red card, injury dramas for key Matilda's players. And Sydney FC now have a free kick. Very much in the range of a couple of their top guns. There's Craig Deans. No doubt arguing that Natasha Pryor was the covering defender. It's going to be Ledbrook. And that one perhaps more suited to the alternative goalposts used here at Leichhardt Oval. Well, we're going to have another look at the replay. Really see if Lisa Devana was on goal. I really have doubts that Natasha Pryor was going to be able to do anything to stop Lisa Devana. It's a really tight call either way. How much of the referee's thinking may have been affected by the fact that it is Devana and we know how quick she is relative to other players. Oh, Ford is it's, limping. It's, it's a really good point, Taya. Sorry, Sarah, but Caitlin Ford is literally on one leg at the moment and I would be stunned if we see her after the half-time break. You got Lisa Devana limping, Caitlin Ford limping. Now a pile-up of bodies, and eventually the referee stops the madness. One last hurrah, maybe, for the 10-player Newcastle Jets. If they were to come back from here, it would be one of the all-timers. But we do see strange and dramatic things happen in W League semi-finals. A hit and hope from Van Egmond. Stengel. Now Houston. Gilliland. This is it. Last chain of play for the Jets. Can they make something happen? Not with Teresa Polias in the way. And that whistle brings an end to a first half that had absolutely everything. Sydney FC out to a 2 0 lead. Hannah Brewer sent off for the Newcastle Jets. A tall order faces the Jets at the start of the second half. Sky Blues on the march at the moment. Half time at Leichhardt Oval. Sydney FC 2, Newcastle Jets 0. And to get some instant reaction at pitch level, it's Amy Duggan. Thank you.
Mateo joined by Kylie Ledbrook. What a half it's had everything, but you find yourself in a comfortable position. Yeah, we're 2 0 up, but we can't settle here because last time we were 2 0 up and they come back for the draw. So we need to keep going, get a couple more away, and hopefully we can get into that grand final next week. All right, well, we'll let you get into the sheds with your team. As you heard it, Sydney FC 2 0 up, and as Newcastle heads to the sheds with 10 men to work out what to do, we're going to take a short break here on Fox Sports and SBS. I'll be joined by Natasha Dowie and Amy Harrison at the pod after this break to go through this crazy first half. It is semi-final football in the W League and this is a game that has everything and it's only been 45 minutes. Half-time, Sydney FC leading 2-0. But there's more to this game than the scoreline. As I said, it has had everything. So as we take a look at it, Sydney FC's Amy Harrison and Natasha Dowry from the Victory joining me again at halftime this afternoon to go through this. I can only call it crazy first half, Natasha. Oh, it's been great to watch. Um, you know, Newcastle came out of the blocks very strong the first five minutes or so. But then since the goal, they've just gone to pieces, unfortunately. And you can see Craig Dean on the sideline. You know, the distances are too big. They're turning over possession. Um, and to be honest, Sydney are running away with this game well the stats do tell us a picture but the thing is this game isn't about the statistics is it it's a different mindset it's semi-final football Amy and, and your brain has to switch into a different mode and Sydney's out there with that today as we look through these numbers yeah obviously the most important one is two goals to nil and I think you know a big difference the total shots obviously I don't think their shots have been you know too threatening I think ours definitely have um, but with that, we, we held possession definitely in our favour. And I think, you know, with 10 men, that's definitely going to help us towards the end of the game. Well, that's the challenge now, isn't it? Of course, we've had a couple of goals, some great chances and a red card, which we will have a look at. This is the first goal. It only took nine minutes. Newcastle probably had the better, the better start to this game. But uh, once this ball went through to Caitlin Ford and it was at her feet, it was always going to be a goal. Well, it sums up Newcastle's problem. You know, it starts from Katie Stengel turning the ball over too easily. Devanna too much time to then find that pass. See, Katie Stengel there with her size needs to hold it up better. Devanna on her left foot, you can't give her that much time. And then 1v1 with Caitlin Ford, you're talking problems now. You've got a keeper on her left foot. You can't let her cut in that easily. And then the keeper, I would be disappointed getting beat on my near post as well. It's been a big mismatch, though, hasn't it? We, we mentioned before the game this the change in... Uh, the change in formation for Sydney meant Caitlin going up front, and that's been one of the things we've been working on at training this week, Amy. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, yeah, a massive focus for us was was putting Caitlin back in uh, back in that number nine role, and Ante's you know matched that up perfectly. I think you know as as Tasha said, it's been a mismatch. She's just turned both Cass Davis and Tash Fry inside out, and and it's shown with the one nil goal for her and then two nil result. And the second one not coming too long after this, also coming off a mistake from Newcastle. Yeah, a turnover of the ball again here. Ford's on the ball, I think, here. And, you know, just too much time yet again because of the distances in Newcastle. You know, she's, she's taking touch after touch after touch. No one's come anywhere near her. Same again, too much time. Touch after touch, no pressure. You know, and then say, even that shot, you know, it's just no one anywhere near any of the Sydney players. And these aren't average players. These are world-class players. And they're just getting far too much time. And they're going to punish you. And Ledbrook, it's a terrific finish with the outside of her left foot. And, you know, she does that. You've seen her score those every season. Such a, a great Great goal for a great player. What a way to go into half time. Sydney will be stoked. What would Ante Urich be saying? Yeah, obviously very happy with the 2 0 result, um, but he'll definitely be in there saying, don't be complacent. Um, you know, we we're up against them last time we played them in round 10, so super important we played to that 90th minute because, you know, they are a, a, a girl down, but they will fight. Well, let's talk about that because after being two goals down, there was this challenge that came. A bit of conjecture over if it was a red card or not. I will ask you, Tash, what you think, but this means it's an absolutely monumental task for Newcastle now. It's huge, you know. For me, it's not a red. Um, I think Devanna with her pace, yes, she is away, but if you see the tackle here, I think a touch is actually going away from goal, and I think Pry is near enough there to at least affect the at least affect her attempt on goal. The rule is not near enough, though, is it? She's alongside there. Player, Come on. Sorry. In my opinion, that's not. She's alongside. I think it's very harsh, and to be honest, it's ruined the game now. The game's over, in my opinion, but I think it's really hard. That's a big call to make right now. The game's over. It, it is. I mean, no, they've dominated possession. They're 2 0 up. The players at Sydney have got, they're not going to be losing this game now. 
Sydney won't be disappointed to be playing against 10 men, but we have seen some crazy things happen, haven't we? Yeah, definitely. Like I said, in pre-game, it's semi-final football. Anything can happen. Obviously, now we'll, uh, we won't get complacent. we got, you know, still a monster pe uh, amount of people on the, on the bench to, to bring on with Lena, uh, Remy. You know, we've got Rachel Suda who can all come on and, and change the game in a positive way for us. And that's the difference. They've got them players that can, they can bring on. And of course, Newcastle haven't been without their chances, though. They, they have had plenty of chances. And had their first shot from Emily Van Egmond gone in, this could have been a completely different game. Yeah, she looked like she was really on it today in the first few minutes. Her and Katie Stengel having a few efforts. But then since the game's twisted, I just need to see a little bit more leadership from Newcastle. The big players for Sydney have stepped up. Their key players, the Matildas, the internationals. But for me, the Newcastle internationals and Matildas now, they really need to step up and be leaders in this second half. Well, Newcastle will be heading into the sheds, uh, no doubt with a very fired up coach. That is one thing for sure. Can they reset? Can they come out here and provide a fight back to Sydney FC's lead as it stands? I'm pretty sure we're not going to see a couple of the Sydney FC players in the second half, but it is a monumental task ahead. Of course, that's not all the football we have coming your way. The second half of the Westfield W League on its way. That will be followed by this match. One versus three in the A-League. Melbourne, Sydney, Sydney FC, that's coming your way next tonight. Then tomorrow we head to Perry Park in Brisbane for the second of the W League semi-finals where the Raw takes on Melbourne City for a place in the grand final. Following that the Wanderers and Wellington Phoenix will do battle from 7 o'clock and if that's not enough football for you of course Tara hits the couch tomorrow night with the boys and shoot out and then we will wrap up our week of football here with the A-League hour on Monday evening with Adam and the boys. Stay with us, the home of football on Fox Sports. First half had it all in the W League semi-final. Sydney FC 2, Newcastle Jets nil, and down to 10 players. They have a huge mountain to climb. Katie Stengel ready to kick off the second half. And Newcastle Jets, their first final since season one of the W League, could not have gone much worse in that first 45. Sydney FC with one foot in the grand final, but still a job to do. As we see Lisa Devanna herring off after the ball here. Can Sydney resume where they finished the first half? Princess Abini trying to sit it up for a volley, then a header, and now cleared away by Gemma Simon. And we had one substitution during the halftime break. As we expected, Caitlin Ford made way. Remy Seamson is into the game, and Sarah Walsh. I think that uh, this game still has a bit of life in it because we have seen so many crazy, wonky things happen this W League season. Well, simply just because it's football, Tao, there's no chance I'm predicting this one. It's obviously going to be really difficult for Newcastle Jets. I think the one thing they do have uh, in their pocket right now is the fact that Caitlin Ford's off the pitch. They now have Lisa Devano, who's probably been the, the most menacing uh, uh, as a wide player. I believe she's probably going to push into the middle. We can see Remy Simpson starting there now, but I think she's going to push into the nine role and not actually going to deal with that too much. Uh, but look, they played well in this first 10 minutes of the match and, and then the goal completely changed their attitude and approach to the match. There was really no effort to, to, to be an option off the ball and poor decision-making. It just went downhill from there and then the red card. So uh, look, they need to be better, obviously. But I, I really don't think they need to panic. I think uh, their structure and, and tactical, we'll see what Craig Deans has done. But I can imagine they're going to play with one up top. And it's really important for Jenna Kingsley to come back and defend throughout the, the last 45 minutes of this match. Sydney FC with an early corner. How they would love a third. That one driven into Tory Houston. So they'll get a second back to back. We did hear from Kylie Ledbrook on the way down to the tunnel at half-time that Newcastle did come back from 2-0 down last time the teams met. Just because they're down to play it doesn't make it a formality. They've got to defend this situation, though. Cooper and the volley hooked well wide. Cooper trying to score in consecutive weeks after finding the back of the net at a corner against Western Sydney in the final home and away round. Let's get an update from pitch level with Amy Duggan. Thank you, Tao. Well, I was catching up with Ashley Wilson just then and she let me know that they, the halftime chat probably wasn't as abrasive as you'd think in the Newcastle Jets change room. In fact, they're trying to just let that first half slide now and know that they have to go after this. They're a player down, they're two goals down and they're going to give it everything they have in this second half. So that's the message. On the other front, Caitlin Ford on the bench. 
just a uh, an injury which is not too serious at this stage. More just resting her in case they need her next week. Yeoman Dale's cross and no one home. Ball tails out for a goal kick. Well, Sarah Walsh, that's the really good news we hope for Caitlin Ford because we saw her hobbling and jumping on one foot trying to finish the first half and uh, those are the sort of things that don't just send shockwaves through the Sydney FC camp but through all of the football community because she's so important to the Matildas as well. Well it's never good when you can well when you see a, a player that can't do a, a single legged hop and, and it's around a knee injury and you know the innocuous ones you have to worry about but hopefully it's it's nothing serious for Sydney FC and the Matildas. But uh, what I'm interested to see this second half, Teo, is how Sydney FC approach this, this last half. Will they really put the foot down you know, and really go for the jugular? Tell you what, it's so difficult when you, you know you're a player up. It actually can be quite confusing when there's more space than you used to. And it's easy to break down the lines. So let's see if they are the team that they've been the last you know, nine matches and, and really put this game away. And, of course, certainly from a personnel point of view, Hannah Brewer was one of the key reasons that Lisa Devanna wasn't as prominent as she could have been in that first half. So now that the literal player marking is gone from the game, does that free up Devanna to try and do a bit more? They've already negotiated four and a half reasonably calm minutes of action. Van Egmond. And that's a great pass to Gilliland. Closed down by Cooper. And offside. Well, it just breaks down when they least needed it there, the Newcastle Jets. Four offsides to one so far this afternoon. So. The flag has just intervened at the worst possible times for the Jets when they're trying to get their attacking game going. Aubrey Bledsoe happy to take the free kick a long way from goal. See Emily Son went dashing back into the penalty area just to make sure that nothing would go awry if it was misdirected. Stengel able to win the ball away. Just beyond Van Egmond, Teresa Polias sweeping through. And now space to exploit, Devanna. One on one against Gilliland. Wants to run towards the traffic. Remy Simpson, first touch off the bench. Cassidy Davis able to intercept. And now counter attack, Jenna Kingsley. Does have Stengel ahead of the ball, but wants Van Egmond instead. See Van Egmond holding out the arms. Where are my options? That much more difficult with the player sent off. And now Newcastle slow it down. Gemma Simon. Wheeler with the one-two. It's a well-timed slide challenge. What's the call up against the byline? It is going to be a corner kick after all. This was some good football here from Newcastle Jets. We've seen it for a long time in this match. But the run was important from Gemma Simon. And that's where you want her, overlapping as a left back, getting down further down the park, finding that space and getting a good ball in. Didn't result in anything, but they now find themselves applying a little bit of pressure to Sydney FC. Delivery all important from Van Egmond. Wants Gilliland. Aaron Gilliland gets Newcastle back in the game. And the 10 Jets aren't done with by a long shot. Newcastle 1, Sydney FC 2, Aaron Gilliland with the goal. Well, the ball in here was gorgeous from Emily Van Egmond. And you can see no one had picked up Gilliland in the back post. She's completely hit it where it come from. It was a perfectly timed header. And they're back in this match, Newcastle Jets. You can see New Sydney FC switched off at the back. And it was all off the back of really good work from Newcastle Jets on the left-hand side. Things are getting interesting. 
As you can see, there's six for the season now for Aaron Gilliland, behind only Katie Stengel with ten. What an asset to have a goal-scoring winger who plays as a fullback in America and was a central midfielder for the Newcastle Jets last season before being recast as part of the front three. That really is versatility. And we flagged it in the first half, Sarah. Corners, set pieces, goals in the air. And that's how Newcastle have got themselves a lifeline. And now playing with a bit of momentum. Houston. Just beyond Wheeler. Will Sydney get nervous? Will they consolidate? Jets playing with a bit of adrenaline at the moment. Well, they have to, Tao. That's that's the thing. It's just human nature when when you're a team. I, I remember what it used to feel like. You're a team with a player up. I don't know whether it's complacency or you know you you probably don't have to put in 110 percent because you know the other team are having to do that being a player down. But really, when you think about it tactically, they're only missing a player. They're only missing a striker. That the players come and drop back in. They're only playing with one striker up top. So. And in the midfield and defence, it's the same game. Legazzo. Wheeler just stuck out of boot. Couldn't quite hold Sydney up. Cooper. Now Devanna setting herself against Gilliland. And strength from the American. Oh, Davis has left the ball behind. Tash Pryor, uncompromising, just slid in and took it away from Remy Seamson. And now off the head of Rolston. Kingsley, half a chance. Stengel digging deep to try and get into the area. And the cross is over the head of Katie Stengel. It's only the 55th minute and it's starting to feel like the last five. The game being stretched, some tired legs already. We flagged that no cloud cover playing in the bright sunshine today would have a sapping effect on the players. Who's going to have the legs? Devanna. Running through, trying to go through the white shirts of Newcastle. And in the end, Devanna knocked over Tash Pryor in a free kick. Uh, well, Tash Pryor wasn't getting beaten here. That was an awesome tackle. She timed it perfectly. Lisa Devanna was off. You can see they've just got a little bit more purpose and certainty. She's been hit late. She's hanging on to her elbow. Newcastle yet to turn to the bench. They've got two strikers on there, Courtney Vine and their all-time leading scorer, Tara Andrews. They could have reinforcements if they really need to go for it. They're all warming up at the moment. Sydney FC have made the one change. Still got Lena Kamas. More than 40 W League goals to her name, of course. Sonnet. Seeing the opportunity to take the game on. Defers to Ledbrook. Now Yeoman Dale. Pryor. Again, uncompromising. Well timed. Stengel coming back into the defensive half. And Wheeler's pass is going to tail away from Van Egmond. So the, you can have a feel that the crowd have just been stunned by that goal. Newcastle Jets have come out with the right mindset at least. Even the way they're defending. Defending with purpose. Wheeler setting the task for Kingsley up against Sonnet who was able to balk cleverly and just sell Kingsley the wrong way. Yeoman Dale into trouble. Van Egmont. Wheeler. Now the Jets reset around their back four. Gilliland. Houston. Good pressure from Legazzo. Here's another look at the goal, Sarah. And the ball. We talked about it was beautiful, but I don't know what's happening in the back line here for Sydney FC. There was a player there. What was it, sorry? 
Who we got on 15, Taylor? It was 15, Co it was Cooper. Cooper was, Cooper was the one following Gilliland to the ball. But with no, no real intent to be able to make any challenge on that header. It was a little bit static. It was reactionary. And the only one that wanted to actually connect with the ball was Gilliland. Hugh start, firing, high and wide. Gilliland did score with a header in the first meeting between these two teams at McDonald Jones Stadium. And has proven to be an excellent aerial player, as are so many American players that come over to the W League. Chicago Red Stars. And look, you can see everybody is actually static and ball watching. No one has any idea about what run's been made. It's, it's almost zonal. And you don't want to turn to completely man marking, but you cannot just be watching the ball in that moment. Cooper. Now Devanna. Space to turn. And Pryor just has the stride on Simpson. Simpson's going to make it awkward. And the end result is she's been able to win a corner. Tash Pryor certainly doesn't agree. You see she's still appealing with the referee. She's done a really good job here to shield it out. She still hasn't touched it at that point. Such a beautiful setting. Leichhardt Oval, Carly Ledbrook. Under the shade of the trees. Pelias. Wanted Legazzo. Claire Wheeler able to defend. Pelias on that slice. Unlike the Ledbrook goal from the first half, which couldn't have fallen much better, finds its way out. Almost at the hour mark now. Repeating Sydney, just the one sub so far. Remy Simpson on. Caitlin Ford off injured at half time. Lena Karmas is being walked along the touchline at the moment. That might be next cab off the rank for Ante Juric. Devanna and Wheeler with the foul and the yellow card pops straight out of the pocket booking it for the young central midfielder joins Natasha Pryor in the book well, that is not a good look for anybody here Caitlin Ford on crutches and it could be precautionary to really alleviate the stress, you know, the weight that she's actually putting on. See, that, that might be a bit of an egg on the foot as well. I wonder if it's actually her foot and not a knee. It's going to be a big week for the medical staff. Big couple of weeks for Caitlin Ford. Sydney happy to consolidate possession. We've actually just been told it's a, it is her foot and it's an impact injury. Devanna. Able to find space, Devanna. Blocked straight off the boot. Vital intervention at the last. Protecting the goalkeeper. Sort of thing that can make Britt Eckerstrom's job that much easier. To have the defence holding firm in front of it. Stengel went charging through, but Polias was committed. Simpson. Ebini able to connect. Back to Remy Simpson. Now Legazzo. Players all looking into the sun. Son. Sydney with numbers. Legazzo. Now Devanna in space. Trying to pick the cross. Pryor keeps it away from Seamson. Ledbrook went for the over the shoulder hook. And Sydney really starting to work Newcastle over at the moment. This is wave after wave of attack. With half a bicycle kick in there from Kyla Ledbrook. Really moving the ball around now. Yeoman Dale, Wheeler, block tackle. It's going to come back to Yeoman Dale. Now Ledbrook, blocked by Davis. 
They're in the firing line at the moment, Newcastle. They just need to clear their lines and relieve this pressure. If they keep inviting Sydney on, it's only going to have one end result, and that's the two-goal deficit back in place. You can hear the instructions of Emily Sonnet. Now Devanna. Ledbrook, neat touch. Comes unstuck. Let's throw it down to Amy Duggan with Caitlin Ford. Thanks, Teo. Caitlin, not where you want to be in a sudden death semi-final. What happened and what's the prognosis right now? Yeah, no, not, definitely not. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure. I just came down on my toe and sort of felt a twist in the midfoot. Um, I've injured my left foot before and um, it kind of felt the same. So, fingers crossed it's not, but we'll get scans and x-rays on Monday and, yeah, I guess we'll find out soon. All right, well, all the best. We hope it's not too serious. Cool. Thank you, Simon. Thanks to Amy Duggan and thank you to Caitlin Ford as well for giving us an update there and hopefully settling a few jangling nerves that will be out there among the fans. Newcastle trying to find their equaliser here. Pryor, centre back striding forward. Tara Andrews is ready to come on at the sideline. So Craig Deans is going to bring on one of those attacking weapons. And Ante Juric has responded in kind. Lena Kamis will be entering the game next break in play as well. This is a really good move here from Craig Deans, I think. It's not getting enough movement. Kingsley waiting in the middle here. Beyond her touch. Snapshot blocked off the boots. And now Gilliland off the number of Ford. You heard the impact. And Sydney scramble it away. Promising passage of play for the Jets. And now the changes will arrive. First up, it's Newcastle. Claire Wheeler, who we saw get that yellow card a moment ago, is Newcastle's first to leave the game. And their all-time top scorer with 25 W League goals, Tara Andrews, comes on. And Sydney FC's second change of the afternoon is to bring 25 cap Matilda Lena Karmas into the game and say thank you for 65 minutes of service to Princess Abini. What do you make of those changes, Sarah? Well, I want to talk to the Newcastle Jets one. I think it's a really, really good move. You can see that it's demanding that Tori Houston will actually sit. Houston now slicing off the left boot, held on to by Bledsoe. Should be the player that sits in the midfield, allowing Emily Van Egmont a little bit more freedom to go forward. And with a player like Tara Andrews playing in the 10, sitting just behind the strikers. I think it's a really good move. They needed fresh legs as well. Van Egmond measuring the pass to Stengel. Only Kingsley ahead of the ball. Stengel finds Kingsley. Cooper has to be careful. Kingsley still going. It's going to sit up. Andrews can't get involved. Van Egmond will chase it down. Newcastle stay on the attack. Van Egmond into the side netting. Oh, well, they're, they're asking the right questions, aren't they, Newcastle Jets? Really lifted the intensity this last five minutes in the match. It's going to be tough because you can see there was almost five versus two in the, in the box. We're going to need a little bit of luck. And with Lena, Lena Kamas coming on, that's going to be really difficult for them in defence. Lena Kamas is an out-and-out out nine. Wins the header here. Simpson stuck in a one-on-two. Dangerous back pass. Davis deflecting it off Devanna. Able to win it off an indecisive Sydney team there as Cooper and Legazzo almost got in each other's way. Van Egmond. Yeoman Dale. Stengel chasing hard. Trying to prevent Sydney getting out of their defensive half. Houston in a battle with Legazzo. Was there contact to the face? Chloe Legazzo's gone down. 
Well, it didn't look intentional from Houston. She allows them time now to recoup. recoup. Brushed by the trailing arm there. <laughs> Legazzo right to continue though. Yeoman Dale. Legazzo. To elevate the cross. Eckstrom plucks it out of the air. Kamas. Flag up. Remy Simpson is offside. May have struggled to run down the ball as she went around Eckstrom. Well, that passage of play, that was nice to watch. Selena Kamas left the space. <laughs> Remy Seamson attacks it. Before she played that ball, she asked for it. Just needed to time a run better. Aaron Gilliland, Newcastle's goal scorer. Kingsley. Polias wins it from Andrews. Ledbrook. Karmas, just a battering ram. And uh, white line fever is something that Lena Karmas really does specialise in. Never far from a confrontation. Well, she's clearly playing off the ground here. I'm not sure what she's uh, appealing about. Up in the face of Cassidy Davis. Lara Lee trying to calm things down, but... One of the most passionate players... Genuine to intensity. Ever ...played in a sky blue jersey. I'll test to say that she might be one of the most passionate players I ever played with. <laughs> Pushing the back there from Davis. Hey, mate, if I... Big pack of players forming, hoping Van Egmond can put this in a dangerous area. Sydney FC hoping to clear their lines. Sonic able to get the first header, but it slides out for a corner. Well, again, I'm, I'm going to be ultra critical because uh, I'm a big fan of Emily Sonnet. It can't be out for a corner. It absolutely has to be dealt with and pushed out. And now, team under pressure. This is how they scored last time. Into the last 20 minutes of regulation, Newcastle trying to save their season. Down to 10 players. They scored from the last corner they took. And Egmont doesn't want a bar of the short corner. It's a conventional delivery. And this one misses everyone. And that's all Newcastle Jets need. They need a little bit of luck. They need to be able to force a corner, force a free kick. The game can change on set pieces. And I have no doubt they talked about that it was a weakness for Sydney FC. The inability to be able to deal with crosses and, and set pieces in their own box. Ball on the right. And Yeoman Dale closed down. Courtney Vine is getting prepared on the sidelines for the Newcastle Jets. So they're about to bring on the other attacker they had on the bench. Seamson. Karmas. Flag stays down. And perhaps the shot on the tight angle may have been preferable as Davis scrambles it clear. Well, if she plays that ball in nine times out of ten, it lands at the feet of a, a blue shirt. And was she offside? I'm not sure. You can see there were appeals from Newcastle Jets. I'm sure we had the angle. Van Egmond. Gilliland. Mustering up the energy to sprint down the ball. Andrews, through for Gilliland, and well blocked away by Caitlin Cooper. Here comes the next sub for the Newcastle Jets, Courtney Vine coming on, Jenna Kingsley coming off. Vine is yet to score in the W League, 
Today is game number 18. There wouldn't be a better time for her to get off the mark. And Jenna Kingsley, who has had to do a power of running with the Jets down to 10, leaves the game. Well, Courtney Vine's a player that's going to bring very fresh legs. She can get forward, gets back. She's familiar with being in front of goal. Straight into the game. And taking down Teresa Polites, who is a little bit worse for wear as a result. Seems all right. Vaughn was at the Brisbane Raw the last two years. He's been playing a cameo role in most games for the Jets this season. Both teams have now made two of their three subs. Solid header from Houston. Sonnets. Had to be careful. Stengel was coming in from the blind side. Yeoman Dale. Legazzo. Kamis. And Pryor, with late contact from Ledbrook, wins a foul. She's been very steady in defence to Tash Pryor. She's had to deal with a lot this second half. What I like about her is that, uh, look, she's not the quickest player on the pitch. And she's quite a young player, inexperienced. Surprised to only see her in, uh, in the W League this year, but uh, for someone that lacks the pace, she's, she's smart. She reacts early so she doesn't get caught out. Loose touch from Karmas and professional foul on Van Egmond to stop Newcastle breaking away. And has got a yellow card as a result. So Karmas and Polias now have yellows from Sydney FC. You see Lena Karmas was asking for a, wow, an elbow. Well, that, that yellow card was coming, wasn't it? <laughs> and now we wonder, will Lena Karmas rein it in or continue to just walk the line, try and push Sydney FC towards a third goal. Van Egmond. And it clears all the players. There is a pocket of Jets fans who've made the trip. Into the last 15 minutes we go then. If we do finish level, extra time. Right now though, Sydney FC would be advancing to play the winner of tomorrow's semi-final between Brisbane Raw and Melbourne City. Who I'm sure are watching on with a passing interest in what transpires in the next quarter of an hour. Well, that's probably one of the first years. I've, maybe not the first year, but well, I actually don't think that it was uh, advantageous to come first this year. One of the most informed teams at the moment is Melbourne City, who have snuck into the final four over Canberra United. And I'm not sure if that's a, a reward for Brisbane Raw winning the Premier's plate. But look, I think... The form that Brisbane Roar in, I don't think they're, they're too fussed about who they play. They're playing at home at Perry Park. I'll tell you what, get your popcorn out for that one. I can't wait. We've got an issue here for Carly Ledbrook. Trainer is out to assess, so the players are going to take a drinks break here. In a lot of distress here, Ledbrook. You can see... Perhaps like Caitlin Ford, it's a problem with her foot. Wow, she's got the, the studs of Courtney Vine. Ooh. Hopefully it's one of those ones that uh, you know, they sting for the first 10 minutes. Can run it out. She's been excellent today, Kylie Ledbrook. She's been masterful in the midfield for Sydney FC. Before, com before coming into this match, I was thinking about where the matchups were going to be, and 
Emily Van Egmont and Kylie Ledbrook, a wealth of experience between those two players and the key moments who was going to win the battle. I think Kylie Ledbrook's been on top today. Vine climbing into Caitlin Cooper here. Ledbrook is proppy, but waved back on. Trying to run off that tread on the toes. I'd actually be happy if, if someone that's out there watching this match could tell me the last time they, they uh, saw Kyla Ledbrook go off with an injury. She might just be one of the toughest players to have played the W League. Danger for Bledsoe. Andrew's trying to run the ball down. Goalkeeper able to scramble it clear, clear at the last. And now Sydney FC through Karmas. Ledbrook recovered. Out to Devanna. Swings it to Legazzo. Legazzo straight into the arms of Ekstrom. Van Egmont just roaming the pitch, trying to find space and openings. Hoping for Vine. Rolston was in the way. Ledbrook, Remy Simpson's offside. Flag up. Yeah, Remy Simpson needs to get better there. She started from an offside position. It's really hard at the moment to see where Newcastle Jets are going to get this goal they need from. It's been so hard to get numbers forward. Now Davis clattering Devanna, who's been on the end of some real attention today, Lisa Devanna. Finds herself flawed once again. Well, there's no doubt it's a free kick. A little bit clumsy from uh, Davis. Trainer being kept busy for Sydney FC as well. Here's the other angle. Just, it just puts these kind of moments, put Newcastle Jets on the back foot again. Lisa Devana wasn't going to go anywhere if she did win that ball. It's these things that have really let Newcastle Jets down today. Legazzo has Karmas. It's Karmas! Couldn't steer at Goldwyn. just know now that a third Sydney goal would be the decisive one in this match. Newcastle hanging in there, hoping for an equaliser. Devanna's back on the pitch, that's the good news. Crowd don't like the call, but it's a Newcastle throw. Cooper, Sonnet, Polias, and now Devanna. Stengel chasing, Ralston able to connect the pass, and Sydney away through the right. Yeoman Dale. Back to Ledbrook. Yeoman Dale's got space. Davis able to get the ball clear. Now Van Egmond assessing the situation. And the flag is up against Remy Simpson again. Side starting to dog Sydney FC's attempts. Well, that's Coach Keller, that one. I'm just uh, waiting to see when Craig Deans is going to decide to go at three at the back and push Gilliland up. Lever of all defensive duties. He's going to have to go for this game at some point. Loose touch from Vine. Devanna capitalising. Sonnet. 
Yeomandale, space to roam. Had to worry about chasing the ball down first. It's all Newcastle at the fall. Gemma Simon, now Van Egmont. And Simon can exploit here with Yeoman Dale still up the pitch. Sydney trying to reorganise. And it's a vital header from Caitlin Cooper to keep it away from Vine. Third and final sub coming up for the Jets. Nicola Orgill is coming on. And Gemma Simon is going to leave the game. You flanked it just a moment ago, Sarah Walsh. Does this mean a tactical switch here from the Jets? Yeah, I, I just, they cannot afford to have Gilliland playing it right back. It's a complete waste. If you're going to go down, you go down swinging. We look like we might have our three at the back here now with Davis, Orgel and, and Tash Pryor. Van Egmond. Huster. Yeoman Dale. And now Remy Simpson. Pryor. Vital. Karmas was trying to sneak away. Gilliland. Van Egmond. A couple of players caught flat-footed there. Ralston was not. And now Ledbrook rolling it to Karmas. And Devanna pulls up as the ball bounces away. Well, Devanna's actually playing a, a key role in the uncertainty here for Newcastle Jets. If it's any other player, you'd leave him up there, push it right back forward. Gilliland's completely in two minds with Lisa Devana still making runs forward. Early ball from Yeoman Dale, too much on it. Five minutes of regulation to go. Newcastle Jets trying to find an equaliser. Sydney FC trying to close this one out. Ledbrook, as of right now, her goal would be the match winner. Simpson. Cooper. Able to protect the ball, Cooper. Down to the corner. And now Simpson's turn to protect the ball. Jets can't win it back. Ledbrook and Polias falling off balance. Well, it's set up perfectly for her. It was a good, well held up from uh, Kylie Ledbrook. She's just been excellent today, making sure she kept the play alive. Sonnet. Newcastle just can't get the ball at the moment. Vine able to win it back. Van Egmond. And Rolston, who gave the ball away, is able to wash her out for a goal kick. Great crowd at Leichhardt Oval. They've been vocal today, supporting Sydney FC. How good is that? Full stands for the W League semi-final. There's a really good turnout today. It is such a good pitch to play at. Fans close to the action. Simpson. Had to van a breaking, but Davis able to strip the ball away. Van Egmond has to go chasing. He's covered so much ground in this second half. Still digging deep. And now swings it over to Gilliland. Devanna. Gilliland trying to keep the ball. Foul given. Jets free kick. Look at that defence from Lisa Devanna. She's come all the way back from the front line to get back and make sure she got that tackle on Gilliland, who's now... Starting from higher up the park, another yellow card. Oh, 
Well, two of Sydney's three yellow cards today have been Polias and Ledbrook talking their way into the referee's book. Two minutes plus stoppage to go. And it's defended at the top of the area by Remy Simpson. Davis was caught backtracking. Simpson nearly broke through. Crowd rising here, urging Sydney FC on through these dying stages. Newcastle will be held up here because they're going to make another sub. 16-year-old Julia Vines coming into the game. And Kylie Ledbrook, who scored Sydney FC's second goal as of right now, the decisive goal back in the 35th minute, is going to be subbed off. 21, Julia Vines. And some here in the stands at Leichhardt Oval are rising to their feet to appreciate the work of Kylie Ledbrook today. Well, I'll tell you what, if someone had told me that Kylie Ledbrook, Ledbrook would be here playing in a semi-final in 2018, she's had a child, and her partner recently had a, another one. It's just so good to see her come back into the W League and, and not only perform, but she is dominating. And she's going to be crucial to this Sydney FC team if they get through today in the final. Simpson battling. And now finds Devanna. Devanna! Oh, that was the grand final beckoning. It may not matter, but that would have shut the door. Van Egmont. See the unconventional toe poke here. Don't try it at home, kids. And not far off the mark. But again, Newcastle Jets have gone all the way out the other end. Well, hope for Newcastle. Five minutes of additional time at the end of regulation in this semi final. They must score or it's season over. Karmas' header. Lugazo. Karmas. More numbers committing forward for Newcastle. Andrews made a contest. Vine trying to bring it to feet. But it was Lugazo's feet. Vine back in to Vanna. Given away. Andrews. Gilliland. And Sonnet and Bledsoe combined. They've spilt it. It's still alive. Stengel and the equaliser. Tara Andrews. Would you believe it? The Jets are level. The Jets are level. And this semi final might just be going to extra time. Absolutely in shock. I cannot believe they found the outlet. The difference being Tara Andrews. She found the space. The ball was genius. Look at this ball here from Tara Andrews. Gilliland couldn't finish it off. They couldn't deal with the ball. They couldn't deal with the defense. And Tara Andrews there to finish it. Newcastle's golden girl is back in 2018. Well, we have a game on our hands now. Tara Andrews, who broke onto the W League scene by scoring from halfway against Sydney FC all the way back in 2010, has saved their season with a last-minute equaliser here. The Jets' all-time leading scorer and goal number 26 of her W League career might just be the most important. The crowd in shock and two teams who've now emptied their benches, starting to contemplate 30 more minutes. And you can't help but think of that Devanna miss just moments ago. Had Julia Vines free as a bird in the middle as well. Newcastle trying to steal it here. And Rolston stands tall. 
Still plenty of stoppage time to go. There is enough time, Sarah, for one of these two teams to win it without the need for extra time. Well, I'm still sitting here in shock, Tao. I was wondering where it was going to come from, and it come from genius from Tara Andrews. That ball she played through to Gilliland to cut through the defence was absolutely, absolutely superb. She's a big-time player, big-game player, and that was her moment. Sydney trying to win it. Pryor, vital challenge. The counter might be on here. You fancy if Newcastle are to win it, now's the time. Stengel, Cooper trying to shut her down. Stengel persists. And stuck in a one-on-two, Teresa Polias comes away with the ball. Van Egmond. Tackle was from behind, foul given. Logazzo. Vines, Orgill. Big battle between the late subs. And Vines is there. Sonnet. Thomas will turn and see options, but Tori Huster shuts it all down. And now Stengel, I think, exhausted rather than trying to break onto the ball. Into the last minute of five additional time we go. Sydney FC were 2-0 up in the 35th minute. Hannah Brewer was sent off in first half stoppage time. And they have clawed their way back to 2-2. If they can hold out for 40 more seconds, it's extra time. Prior. Vines, now Karmas. Van Egmond slowing it to a walk. A cool head, Emily Van Egmond, and now Cass Davis. Got it away from Legazzo. Now the Newcastle Jets, I feel like they probably need a, a stoppage of play here. They need it to go to extra time. Sydney FC would just be so disappointed with themselves. One last hurrah, perhaps, for Sydney FC. Vines, Orgill, and a foul against Julia Vines. Stoppage time has expired. Lara Lee checks the watch. Well, I can't wait to, until we hear back from Tash Pryor, who'd put this game to bed at half time. Uh, Tash Dowie, sorry, she's on the field. She's not talking to us, is she? Yeah, uh, look, you could be forgiven for thinking this was over. Two goal deficit. All eyes on the referee. Play continues. Houston. Yeoman Dale recovers. Sonnet. Prior. Karmas. Full time whistle. 2 2 at the end of 90 enthralling minutes. And this semi-final is far from over. They're going to have to dig deep and keep going because we don't have a grand finalist yet. Off to extra time we go then at Leichhardt Oval. After 90 minutes, the score, Sydney FC 2, Newcastle Jets 2. What a finish to the game. Tara Andrews saving the Jets' season with a stoppage time equaliser. Back from 2-0 down, down to 10 players. And who knows which way this game is going to go now. Absolutely thrilling stuff. And the Westfield W League semi-final weekend always delivers. And we're off to extra time again. I did say at the top of the show, six out of 18 semis have gone to penalties. I wonder if it will be the case again today. Let's go down to pitch level. Amy Duggan, Amy Harrison and Natasha Dowie. And we're all down here absolutely dumbfounded. This is unbelievable on the sideline. One player who's got to eat her words in a moment and the other who's uh, in a state of shock, I think, Amy. Yeah, I, I have no words. I, I can't believe it. I'm, I'm going mad sitting there. It's, it's definitely nothing that I think anyone could have predicted. Tash, I think you said game over at that time. I'd love to be proven wrong. You know, I eat my words, I hold my hands up, and credit to Newcastle. You know, any other team in this, in the, probably in women's football, 2 0 down at half time against this Sydney team, the way they're playing, would have given up. But that's just the beauty of the W League, and anything can happen. Any team can beat anyone, and really, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to look at this from a Newcastle perspective, though. They've gone into the sheds, 10 players, 
and down 2-0. They haven't been chastised for what went wrong in the first half. Their coach found a way to inspire them, to make them confident and to come out here like they flicked a switch in the second half. Definitely. And, you know, their big players stood up. Van Eggman was absolutely dominating the midfield, making things happen. Gilliland coming up the big head to change the game. And, you know, they actually looked like they were playing with more players. And I think that's the beauty sometimes of playing against 10 players. It's actually a lot harder. You know, Newcastle looked like they just had so much energy. They actually looked the fitter of the two teams. Sydney dropped off a lot more and, you know, probably they were just too comfortable. And Newcastle really deserved deserve to be, be where they are right now. Ante, Ante Juric at half-time would have been sitting pretty, you would think. I mean, the instruction would have been fairly simple. Go out there, keep the ball, move forward. Something they haven't done in the second half that they did in the first half is that long ball, and it's cost them two goals by giving the ball away. Yeah, I think obviously losing Caitlin, that really changed the dimension of our attack. Um, I, mean, I think Lisa could probably, this is probably her time to step up and, and show why she's won all those championships. Um, but yeah, like you said, they've, the momentum's changed. It's shifted straight towards Newcastle, which really it shouldn't have because we have a, an extra person and a wealth of experience. So I think that's where they need to step up. And the difference in this second half has, of course, been Newcastle's heart on those two goals. Aaron Gilliland getting over the top off that corner. And that second goal in the, the dying breath, everyone thought it was over. The, you know, we were walking down towards the sideline for the final whistle. And Tara Andrews has, you know, eventually picked up the ball off a Lisa Devana giveaway and, and she's become Newcastle's golden girl today. I was actually talking to Amy just before that second goal and I didn't know the young kid that came on, but apparently Amy was saying she was only a 16-year-old kid. You know, for me, I'd probably question why he's made that substitution. You know, you're 2-1 up with a couple of minutes to go. You've got an experienced player like Ledbrook and you bring a 16-year-old inexperienced kid on and then they've gone and conceded. Well, that's the problem now, isn't it? They, this is the challenge that both teams face. You've got Newcastle down to 10 players and you've got Sydney FC with three of their best players sitting on the bench. What do you do? You work extremely hard and show why you have an extra person and why we want to get into the final. And if you were the Newcastle coach right now, Tash, what would you be saying? Just carry on doing what you're doing. You know, they've played terrific and, you know, Sydney need to look at them and actually think, well, they've got one less player. We can work just as hard as them. It's going to be a great extra time now. I can't wait. It is. We're heading into extra time. The players have had their chance to chat. They're back on the pitch. It's all square as we head into extra time. It's back to our commentary team of Sarah Walsh and Teo Perilazzeri. Thank you, Amy. And uh, thanks to... Natasha Dowie and Amy Harrison as well down at pitch level. We're all just trying to comprehend what on earth happened there at the end of regulation. Newcastle down to 10, but coming back to 2-2. The only other time these two teams played here at Leichhardt Oval, it finished 3-3. So we did say that the top two scoring teams in the league, they know how to find the back of the net. And even with the disadvantage of Hannah Brewer getting sent off as we kick off extra time here at Leichhardt Oval, we find ourselves level and no closer to working out who is going to be playing in the W League Grand Final. Sarah Walsh, which way is this game going to go? Gosh, either way, you wouldn't want to be anywhere else. I have no idea how this 30 minutes is, is going to pan out, but uh, Natasha Dowie makes a great point around uh, Kylie Ledbrook. Look, I was really wondering when Newcastle Jets were going to score that goal from. And it did come out of nowhere. A bit of brilliance from Tara Andrews, but... Uh, you know, I, I don't think he did make the, the right decisions taking uh, Kyla Ledbrook off. I think that really does change dynamics in the midfield for this team. Polias. Cooper. Gilliland was sliding in. I think what Newcastle Jets have done a really good job at is uh, a really huge tactical win for them in that second half. It is so hard of being a player down. But you can manage it if you just play with one up top and everyone works twice as hard, and they've done it. Put themselves in with a chance here. You know what? They actually have momentum. Courtney Vine, one of the second-half subs, up against Caitlin Cooper here. Now Rolston. Vines. Andrews is there to knock it away. Legazzo can't flick it on on this occasion. And look, it's not in Newcastle Jets' nature to, to play defensively, especially when they're in it with a chance here, but are they looking to play out for penalties? 
I'm not sure. We'll get to see with the way that they set up how high Erin Gilliland plays up the park, how, how high she starts. Are they going to play with three at the back? And Egmont's cross. Rolston. Bledsoe was leaping off her line, but dealt with by the defender. Now Vines. Out it goes. We heard the panel discussing Julia Vines there during the break. Just her third appearance of the W League season. She started round one when the young Matildas were away on national team duty and played pretty well in that game. Albeit with Sydney losing to the Brisbane Raw. Karmas. Now Remy Simpson. Yeoman Dale on the overlap. Simpson uses her now. Yeoman Dale. Devanna, the cutback, and held on to by Eckerstrom. Now Van Egmont. Stengel. Trying to turn away from Sonnet. Sonnet prevails. Now Legazzo has Devanna signalling for the crossfield ball, but the flag is up and it's offside. Just to finish on, Julia Vines only turned 16 two weeks ago out of the New South Wales NTC program, and her first club was Normanhurst FC. Don't know if you ever played against them or there in your career, Sarah Walsh, but there you go. When you're that young, it must only be quite recent that she was there, Julia Vines. Credit to Craig Foster and the New South Wales talented player development, though. Another player into the W League, and in this situation, chance to make a name for herself. She does. I wonder how she's feeling the pressure out there. Van Egmont made her debut at an even younger age. She was only 15. And the ball, interesting to see which way the ref will wave that. It is going to be a Sydney FC throw. Things have just settled down through the first four minutes of extra time, haven't they? They have. I think everybody's in a little bit of shock about the result of the regular time. I know I'm still in shock, but uh, loving that we get an extra 30 minutes of this match. And then some if it goes to penalties. Polias. This is where the player advantage for Sydney really starts to show. Cooper. Vines back to Caitlin Cooper. Now Legazzo. Promising build-up. Simpson. Julia Vines. Neat shimmy. And it slides across the face. Legazzo couldn't get a goal-bound touch. Well, if any, anyone questioned her ability, that was excellent there from Vines. The ball was perfect. She just needs someone to get on the back of it, on the end of it. Lisa Devana waiting out. Probably had to attack the ball. And that's a goal. I think Sydney FC, when they do look back at this match and how they allowed Newcastle back into it, I don't think they, they really worked hard enough to stretch this Newcastle defence. We might get to see that in the next 30 minutes, but how did they really stretch him and utilise the space and the extra, extra player? I don't think they did at all in that second half. And by contrast, Emily Van Egmont has been everywhere. She's showing her tank is just incredible in this game. It's a good point, Tay. I think it answers my question around, oh, I don't think Newcastle Jets allowed them to. Tactically, they really stayed tight. They worked for each other. They didn't allow cheap balls in between the lines. They kept them in front. And here is Van Egmont. Not much ahead of the ball. So we'll hold it up, wait for options to try and appear. Stengel, now in a race against Rolston. Vine lurking in the middle. Stengel. Still Stengel! Good save. Bledsoe parries it away. And the two Wake Forest graduates do show down eventually. Great save from Bledsoe to deny Stengel. For such a tall player, she has such dazzling footwork here. She buys herself time and then pulls the trigger. And I tell you what, that trigger she has, it's absolutely venomous. The power that she generates from one step. And she's off the mark there, but she's asking questions. Big moment for the Jets. Sydney have been shaky on corners. Van Egmont trying to capitalise. 
There looked to be a bit of a push on prior, but goalkeeper safe as houses on this occasion. And now Sonnet leading the counter-attack. Slides it to Lisa Devano. The stage is set for Devano! Sydney back in front. Lisa Devano. Superb counter-attacking goal. Well, big moments. Call for big-time players. And it's not the one you're thinking of. It's Emily Sonnet. She made the run from the back line. Look where she is. She placed the ball at the right time. And Lisa Devana, world-class finish from a world-class player. But for me, the difference is Emily Sonnet. International. International standard. Makes the run. She was determined. She took this game on by the scruff of the neck and handed it to a player. A player who doesn't miss from there. And they're back in front. Sydney FC fans loving it. They couldn't hold the lead at the end of regulation, but they've got it again now. And Newcastle again find themselves chasing this game. Vine. Now Van Egmond. Tara Andrews. Van Egmond is going to have a pot shot. That one well over the bar. Well, I, uh, I can't get enough of this, Emily Sonnet. I, I still wonder why she could be playing any league in the world and she chooses the W League. It says so much about our league at the moment. It says so much about this player. I'm still shocked she's not in the starting position for the US team. I absolutely love watching her play. She was sick of no one in her team not stepping up to make the change that needed to be made. And all she did, she seen a keeper with the ball and she made the run. Forced the keeper to play the ball. And well, the rest is history. 13 senior caps for the United States. Emily Sonnet plays for the Portland Thorns over in the NWSL. And is now writing little pieces of history for Sydney FC here in the W League. Still plenty of time for Newcastle. And they're going to have to muster up something again, and Devanna is trying to take this game out of reach. Eckerstrom sharp on this occasion. Well, I'm still not convinced the game's over, Teo. Vines able to win the ball away from Gilliland. Gilliland able to wrestle it back. Well, we saw that Katie Stengel shot that was so well saved by Bledsoe before Sydney's go-ahead goal. And it's plenty of proof that Newcastle have the attacking firepower to try and find themselves a third goal. Well, each of the goals that we've seen is, is off the back of an individual stepping up in that moment. And you're not doing something different because what they've been doing wasn't working. And, and someone like a Stengel who can turn on a dime and have that shot and that's what it's going to take. A little bit casual from Polias, but Rolston is there to help. Out of options, just prodded it out for a throw. Stengel. Great ball from Van Egmond. Stengel. And too close to the keeper in the end. And now Devanna. Crowd sensing another counter-attack opportunity. Early ball, Simpson's offside. And not for the first time today. Newcastle take it quickly, Orgill. Caught by Legazzo. side to side across this pitch gaps opening Newcastle tiring Cooper finds Vines Cooper Simpson Karmas 
and it just rolled off the toe in the end. And now Newcastle can try for a counter-attack of their own. Courtney Vine. Out to Stengel. No one in the penalty area for the Jets. Courtney Vine. And well wide in the end. And that was a tired attacking passage from Newcastle. Well, that goal really took the sting out of the sails for Newcastle Jets. They come into this extra time with the momentum. You can see just looking across the field, the body language. Devanna is still full of running. Pass prior. Devanna can sense the opportunity to end it. Simpson! Great save by Eckerstrom. Well, the precision of this ball here from Lisa Devana. And to be able to do it at speed, she really is just a class above. Stengel hasn't given up on it here, but Sydney have got the numbers. Liz Rolston. Now Cooper. As we see the chance just a moment ago, Britt Eckerstrom down to the ball. Van Egmond. Sonnet back to Van Egmond and now trying from distance but hasn't been able to trouble Aubrey Bledsoe with that one. They really have turned around things for turned things around for this club, haven't they? players on the park today, Newcastle Jets. It's been a long time since they've been in the semi-finals and, and also playing spectacular football this season. Really hope they can keep this team for next year. The majority of this team, and especially Emily Van Egmond, not sure if she's on a two-year deal, but uh, she's been the backbone. And... Legazzo, blocked away by Pryor in the last minute. Of the first half of extra time. Legazzo fell. Houston took the ball away. Newcastle with a chance to break again. Three on four. Van Egmond. Now Stengel. Liz Rolston keeping her at bay. And now Sydney have numbers back. Gilliland. Yeomandale wins it in the air. Legazzo. One minute of additional time in the first half of extra time. Time enough for Sydney FC. Vines. Kamas. Remy Simpson couldn't make a play on the ball. Well, that was a tied clearance here from Nicola Orgel. They are out on their feet. Elias. Being challenged, but able to hold off Huster. Teresa Pelias floating out. And that might just be the last act of the first half of extra time. Links it to Vanna, putting Sydney FC back in the ascendancy. And that is halftime and extra time. Newcastle Jets fans hoping their team can do it again. But right now, Devanna's goal, the difference. 15 minutes away, potentially from a grand final berth. But they've been here already this afternoon. Halftime and extra time then. And it is Sydney FC 3 leading Newcastle Jets 2. And Sarah Walsh, this is the goal that did it to half-time and extra time. Lisa Devanna, after a fantastic counter-attack, it was Newcastle's corner at the start of the move. Well, check this, this is a routine 
play out from the back, but not this time. But the way Emily Sonnet made that hugely aggressive run, played it at the right moment to a player who never lets her club down, or country. But the intent shown from Emily Sonnet is what really put Sydney FC ahead. Your centre back making a forward run to create an attack. And setting out the striker was beautiful. You can see there what it meant to Lisa Devanna and her teammates. There's the Sydney FC coach, Ante Juric. Hoping his team can see it out this time. Newcastle came back from 2 0 down in the second half of regulation. Now they have to find a way to do it again. They've been down to 10 players since Hannah Brewer was sent off in first half stoppage time. Well, again, after that goal, they probably, Newcastle Jets probably uh, needed a moment to regroup. We've got 15 minutes to turn things around here. But I have a feeling Sydney FC are not going to approach this last 15 minutes like they did that second half. Can't afford to be complacent. Second half of extra time underway then. Sydney FC holding a 3-2 lead. Both teams have emptied their benches and made all their available subs. Caitlin Ford left the game with a foot injury at halftime after opening the scoring this afternoon. Feels like a long time ago now. Sydney's second goal scorer, Kylie Ledbrook, also subbed out of the game right at the end of regulation. Andrews. Back to Pryor. And they'll defer all the way back to Britt Eckerstrom. Courtney Vine. Running at Liz Rolston. Rolston does well to slow the attack down. Vine persisting. And the deflection. In the end, a kind one for Aubrey Bledsoe. Houston. Now Van Egmond. Stengel to Andrews. Back to Huster. Hopeful ball. Devanna able to chase it down. And Cooper's pass a little too firmly hit for Legazzo. You wonder if Sydney will start to feel the nerves the way they did in the second half when Aaron Gilliland pegged it back to 2-1. Whether they can show a bit more steel here, holding on to this advantage. Davis. Very busy. Andrews and Van Egmont trying to keep the ball away from Sonnet. They succeed in doing so. Ralston's header sliding to Orgill. Nicola Orgill into the arms of the keeper. And Orgill, who did score her one and only W League goal back when these two teams first met at McDonald Jones Stadium, unable to add to the tally. Well, they're still creating chances. They're knocking on the door. And you can sense the nervousness in this Sydney FC crowd. Vines to Simpson. And now Legazzo, still advancing Legazzo, back to Remy Simpson. Cassidy Davis is there and clears the ball. But it's all Sydney, Caitlin Cooper. Driven into the arms of Eckerstrom. Vine is offside, flag up. Looks like a promising pass from Stengel, but just sneaking beyond the Sydney FC back line. They've still got time in Newcastle Jets. 
They're out on their feet. Played majority of this match. Now with 10 women on the field. Need a little bit of luck. You can see Sydney FC still pushing forward for another goal. Simpson. Firing Remy Simpson. And always sliding wide of the target. I do know two teams that would be happily watching this play out for 120 minutes. And possibly Pens. It's Brisbane and Melbourne City. Sitting back watching this and, and also looking for chinks in the armour for both these teams. Yeoman Dale stood her ground, but find it enough to affect the pass. Slow to get back up, but all right to continue. Courtney Vine. And now Andrews. Newcastle starting to grow in confidence. You can just feel they're working through the gears here. Gilliland. Trying to twist away from Devanna and does. Rolston. Only as far as Van Egmond. And it is a corner for the Jets. Well, here's their chance. There's that little bit of luck. It needs to be good from Emily Van Egmond. The execution needs to be right. The runs into the box. And look, there would be nerves, nerves around the stadium here. Sydney FC, here's their weakness. They've really struggled defending these set pieces. Gilliland, the target, got first head. It's allowed to fall in the area, blocked away by Cooper. And eventually Sydney FC clear their lines. Davis wasn't intimidated by the roar of the crowd as Legazzo advanced. Charging through Cass Davis. Now Van Egmond. Andrews. Karmas to Seamson. Julia Vines might be away here. Just a little too much on the pass. Gilliland. And it just broke the wrong way as far as Newcastle were concerned. Finds against Orgill. Will be a Newcastle throw. Van Egmond. Still at the centre of everything for the Jets. Vine and Stengel combining. Legazzo wins it away. Davis jumped the pass. And now half a chance for Newcastle. Courtney Vine. Caught in possession by Pelias. Julia Vines. Devanna breaking from an offside position. You can see there Tori Huster having to stretch out some cramp. Such a demanding game for both these teams. Van Egmont and Rolston did well to keep Vine out of the action. Well, they're out on their feet here, Newcastle Jets. They really are. They're spent. Tara Andrews is, I don't think she's had a lot of game time this season, so she's out on her feet with the minute she's had. If they're going to score, they're going to need everyone involved. Certainly feels as though they've got the run of play at the moment and Sydney are happy with the counter. And Stengel is unable to chase this one down. Well, they've got to go for it. They have to push all their players forward. A couple minutes left here. They'll lose 4-2 and die wondering. Booming kick to kick at the moment. It's going to fall to the feet of Karmas. Davis has really willed herself on in this second period of extra time. 
trying to provide some drive for the Jets. Shanked by Eckerstrom. It's off a defender here. And Remy Simpson, even though that ball will bounce into the back of the net, was already well aware that she was offside. Sydney FC fans hoping that their team can get through to the grand final. Just over five minutes plus stoppage time now that they need to hold out. Kamas. Ball for Devanna. Able to outmaneuver Pryor. Devanna saved by Eckerstrom. And that was progression. Staring Sydney in the face. Just like regulation. They couldn't seize the moment to make it a two-goal game again. Well, they're still in this match, and there was a questionable offside for me. Lisa Nirvana using the halfway line. Andrews able to wrestle away from Vines, and now Courtney Vine still chasing. Sonnet went to ground and bounced right back up. Davis. They want it at the feet of Van Egmond. Now Stengel. We know this is shooting range for Stengel. Couldn't keep it down. Well, it's in mouths for Sydney FC fans. It's the last player you want to see with the ball on the edge of the box. And she just, she just finds the space. It doesn't matter how close you are. It doesn't matter how much time, uh, sorry, how much pressure you apply to the ball. She manages to get the shot away. Van Egmond went to ground with a cramp. Sydney are going to keep playing here. Remy Simpson now. It's Simpson and Eckerstrom proving vital in these dying stages, keeping it to a one goal deficit. Well, are these the moments that are going to haunt Sydney FC? Two unbelievable saves from Eckerstrom. You can see Tash Pryor, when she does get caught out, it's bad. They are out on their feet. But look at the save here from Eckerstrom. Remy Simpson couldn't find the corner. Unbelievable moment for Newcastle Jets. They're still in this. Van Egmond has done some stretching. Has not left the pitch. Remains out there. Davis brought Simpson to ground, but the referee says Simpson was backing in. It's going to be a Jets free kick. Well, I'm still unsure as to who the hero is going to be today. Vines. Pryor was not compromising. However, it has spilled Sydney FC's way. Yeoman Dale still able to find the energy for another sprint, this time down to the corner. And the end result is that it's a corner kick for Sydney FC. Well, Sydney FC needed that. I'm going to take their time here, take some valuable seconds off the clock. Well, do they even play it in or do they remain down in the corner? Trying to wind precious seconds off the clock. That is what they're going to do. Let the shenanigans begin. Can Newcastle win it away cleanly? They can. Andrews. Van Egmond. Now Stengel. Almost caught Gilliland in stride. It'll still be a Jets ball. Houston. Andrews. Newcastle stringing passes together. Sydney with numbers behind the ball. Stengel against Sonnet. And it 
holds up on the turf. Sonnet able to win it back for Sydney FC. And with a touch from Orgill, out it goes. Crowd rise again. We tick down to the last minute of the 120. Sydney FC holding a 3-2 lead. Well, you could really, you could cut the air with a knife. It is absolutely intense here. So we're in the final minute. It's been never say die from the Jets, but they are running out of time. Courtney Vine trying to escape Yeoman Dale. Yeoman Dale was back in with a vital challenge. Still Jets ball. But it's last roll of the dice stuff now. And Legazzo is crucial against Houston, who has gone down. Sydney FC put the ball out. Legazzo just checking in on Tori Houston. She's hanging on to the right side of her, her face. Yeah, she's clipped an accidental elbow from Chloe Legazzo. They've called for a free kick here for Newcastle Jets. One minute of additional time at the end of 120. Oh, this is a huge turn of events here. A good ball in here could be interesting. There's a big call from the referee. Keeper hasn't come up. Everyone else has. Now or never for Newcastle. And Polias defends it at the top of the area. Devanna trying to control it. Huster. Now Cooper. Yeoman Dale. Sydney FC away. Legazzo pointing Polias to the corner. And that's where Polias goes. And now Legazzo against Vine. Stoppage time is up. Sydney FC are through to the grand final. 120 epic minutes of W League action. And Sydney FC are there. Players collapse to the ground from both sides, absolutely exhausted at the end of one of the great W League semi-finals. Handshakes for the coaches, celebrations for the Sky Blues. They're going to the decider and they have done it in the most entertaining fashion. Full time at Leichhardt Oval and after extra time, Sydney FC 3 defeat the Newcastle Jets 2. This match, Taro, for me, right up there with one of the best, one of the best semi-finals at least. I had no idea who was going to win this. The goals were spectacular. The players have left it all out there, both teams. Newcastle Jets can be very proud with this performance. Their season this year is something definitely to build on for next. Unbelievable, stunning display of football here for both, both teams. Devastation for Newcastle, but what a match they gave us. Let's go down to Amy Duggan on the pitch. Emily Sonnet, an unbelievable 120 minutes, and at the end of it, you have come out our NAB player of the match. $500 coming your way. Congratulations on the win. Um, yeah, uh, hard work from both sides. Uh, we knew they were going to come out, you know, full 90, and that's what it was, plus. Um, but great work from both sides, and I think we're lucky to come out on the winning side there. You certainly did it the tough way. You were up and looked like you had it in the bag at half time. As we know, football never goes like that. What was the instructions at half time and what changed? Um, yeah, I think uh, first half went great. Um, came out, I think we were a little lax. Uh, they're down a man. Um, something I think we str struggled with at the beginning of the season. Um, but I said hats off to our girls, you know, fighting through that and coming in the, on the lucky side here. You got there in the end through a wonderful through ball from yourself to Lisa Devano. You just put your head up and saw free space in front of you? Uh, yeah, uh, I just think I saw tons of space. They're all pushed up. Um, hats off to Lisa, uh, finishing out there on her lucky left foot. Um, but it was good. 120 minutes is really tough on the body. And uh, obviously with a grand final now to play next week, I don't know if you've had a moment to think about that. Uh, no, uh, I think first, uh, you know, recovery, recovery, recovery. It was hot, um, you know. We're, we're, we're really looking forward to it. It's something we've worked for. Obviously, everyone's worked for it. And, you know, we're excited to head to the final. 
Well, congratulations. You're into the 2018 Grand Final. We look forward to seeing you line up again next week. Emson, our player of the match. Well done. I'm just going to walk past you quickly because I need to talk to another Emily now. M. Van Egmond, tough way to end the season, but you can never be accused of not leaving everything on the park. Yeah, um, obviously credit to Sydney. They they got um, two goals early in the half, which was obviously difficult for us to bounce back on. And then we obviously got the red card. But look, that's football and that happens. And just really proud of the girls today um, to fight back right to the end. And um, it's been a really enjoyable season for us here in Newcastle. So. It's not a tough way to go into a second half, down two goals and, and a player sent off. What was the mindset for you guys going into the second half? Because it looked like a, a switch just flicked. Yeah, obviously we had some work to do and, you know, credit to the girls, they came out in the right mindset and we got two back and just unfortunate to cop a third and extra time. But, no, super proud of the team and, um, you know, the club in general. So, yeah. You must be proud of where the club has gone this year. It's been a really long time since Newcastle's made the semi-finals or any finals and it's your first year back at the club. You just must make it. I know it's a disappointment today, but it must feel good to know that you made it this far. Yeah, of course. We haven't been in the semi since, you know, season one. So nine years later down the track, here we are. And I think, you know, this is just a step in the right direction for us, you know. Um, our men's team's doing extremely well and, um, you know, we just want the women to follow in their footsteps. So. And what does it mean for football in Newcastle? Um, yeah, it's, it's huge, you know. Um, obviously, nine seasons, they haven't reached semi final So to do, that, to do that this year with this group of girls has been super enjoyable, like I said. And, um, you know, it's a shame to go out how we did. But, um, yeah, just proud of the display we put on today. Well, it's a disappointing end to the season, Em, but congratulations to you and to Newcastle for making it this far. I'll, I'll let you go and join your teammates. Thanks very much. Cheers. Great to hear from both camps at the end of an epic match. And Sarah Walsh, when Caitlin Ford did this to the Newcastle defence, we thought it was going to be a sky blue day. Uh, she was absolutely insane today. I tell you what, it probably would have been... Uh, we probably wouldn't still be here talking if Caitlin Ford continued this stunning display of football <laughs> in the second half. I think that really changed the game. It really allowed Newcastle Jets to, to get ahead in this match. And uh, they were stunning when they got it right, Sydney FC, when they pushed the ball around. Uh, they're just such a, uh, a joy to watch. And, and here again, I've been told this might have come off her shin, actually. So uh, <laughs> I can't get a close enough look, but I loved it all the same. It looked good. Got the crowd up off their feet and also put him to two uh, goals ahead. Start of the second half, Aaron Gilliland makes it 2-1 at this corner and Newcastle really grew from here. Well, look, this will be a target area for whoever goes into the final, whether it be Brisbane Royal, Melbourne City, uh, defensive corners and free kicks for Sydney FC. You see they were good here, not good enough to get, get it out. Erin uh, Gilliland keeps it alive off the back of Tara Andrews, finishes it when she needs to. She really is the golden girl for Newcastle Jets. It's great to see you back. So that took us to extra time. Tara Andrews with the equaliser. And then Sydney FC. We're going to see this goal a lot more in years to come. Well, I don't mind that, Teo. This run here from Emily Sonnet, uh, for me, really just solidified that game. Uh, player of the match. She was outstanding. And then you know, the clever left foot here, the great finish. She's so deft in front of goal, Lisa Devana. And there's nowhere else uh, Sonnet was going to play that. She really faked to go right. Allowed the spa open up the space for Lisa Devana, so she attacked it and finished it. Such and a joy. The best part is we get to do it all again tomorrow. The other W League semi-final, Brisbane Raw against Melbourne City. Winner plays Sydney FC in the grand final. On behalf of the Fox Sports broadcast crew today, thank you for your company. All over at Leichhardt Oval, Sydney FC through to the grand final. Good evening. This program brought to you by Bet365. Hyundai, proud fan and official sponsor of the Hyundai A-League. NAB, more than money. And Harvey Norman, need advice? We're here to help.